dear learners, I'm Manor Matripathi. I welcome all of you to this Library and Information Science program at senior secondary level. Last time we talked about various types of libraries and information centers. Today we are going to focus on modern libraries, automated, digital, and virtual. Our presentation will cover concept of automation, the need for library automation, different areas of application of library automation, the salient features of an automated library, integrated library management system, concept of digital and virtual libraries, the difference between digital and virtual libraries. There are different methods of providing services in libraries which can be broadly grouped into two classes, manual and computerized services. These are Maintenance of various library records, registers and cards is known as manual system. It involves doing various activities and procedures by hands. Manual means doing by hands without any intervention of computers. There are many libraries which perform housekeeping routine operations which are repetitive in nature manually. The services which are provided or delivered to the users without using computers as an intermediary are known as manual services, whereas automated or computerized services are offered by using computers as tools or intermediaries. At present, the libraries are commonly using computerized system to maintain records of all activities and procedures. The libraries have computerized all their housekeeping operations like acquisition, cataloging, circulation, and recording details of journal subscriptions. The libraries use library management software, which is commonly known as ILMS for performing various activities. Library management software has various modules of library activities through the software, the routine work of the library is done. In simple words, in an automated system, all housekeeping operations are done using computers. The computerized services are offered to the users through the library management software, which is known as ILMS. For example, the circulation section issues books to the readers by using card system or register system. In an automated circulation system, there is no need for the library to issue and maintain borrower's cards or tickets. Every member requires a single card with unique identification number, such as library membership number, to be used by the software to access member database. And the multiple borrowing facilities is also controlled by the software. Now the technical section of the library, we'll be talking about the technical section and as we know the technical section of the library catalogs the books and prepares print or card catalogs. It also prepares list of new additions. In manual system, all these activities are performed manually. In a computerized system, no print or card catalog is prepared and maintained. Only OPEC is provided to the users. In manual system, Libraries prepare bibliographies, abstracts, and indexes as per the research needs of the users. In a computerized system or in an automated system, the indexing and abstracting services are being provided by the commercial publishers to the libraries against a subscription fee. In the unautomated environment, all the housekeeping operations and activities are performed manually. The books are ordered manually. Records of items, documents, books, newspapers, magazines, which a library procures are maintained manually in registers and files. The records which are procured are catalogued and classified manually. Cataloging details are maintained in book or card catalog. The records of registered users are maintained in registers. Issue return, renewal of books, this is all done manually. Whenever students return books late or books are overdue, fines are collected and all this is done, fines for overdue and lost books are calculated and generated manually. When system, when the libraries use computers to provide or extend services, then we say it's an automated system. So automation refers to the phenomenon of mechanization of traditional library activities 
such as acquisition, cataloging, circulation, serial control, etc. Automation involves the use of computers and other technologies to minimize human intervention in the functioning of libraries. In simple words or in other words, it, automation is nothing but application of computers to perform traditional library housekeeping activities such as acquisition, cataloging, circulation and serials control. Now coming to why do we need library automation? What's the need for library automation? There are various reasons and some of them are literature explosion and information overload, need for handling large amount of information sources, data about registered users and right information has to be provided to the right user at the right time. Speedy processing of information and its retrieval, flexibility in information search, better bibliographic control at local, regional, national and international level, economic implications of new information technology. There is need to overcome geographical and other barriers to communication. Optimum utilization of available resources either inside or outside. Improve the existing services from point of view of quality, user friendliness, regularity, consistency, etc. Automation also helps in avoiding duplication of work, utilizing the services of existing staff more effectively. Automation increases the operational efficiency of the library. It copes with the increasing demand for services. It helps in handling the increasing demand for services. It improves the quality of services. It provides new services which are otherwise not possible. It also improves the management of information products and services. It facilitates wider access to information for the users. It helps in wider dissemination of information products and services. It helps in participating. It facilitates libraries in resource sharing, networking. It enables easy communication of libraries and professionals. Integrated Library Management System. ILMS stands for Integrated Library Management System. It automates library functions. It's very important to know that it is called Integrated Library Management System. An integrated library management system is one whose functions use a single database made up of a collection of files or records. All the functions are fully interactive with one another and are in synchronization. It means if a book is issued to a user at circulation, it is simultaneously reflected in OPAC. An integrated library management system may interface with external sources on internet. Library staff may send emails, place direct orders. Cataloging records may be imported to the local library catalog. Now, integrated library management software may be proprietary or open source. Proprietary items or goods are made and sold by a company whose name is there on the product. Examples are Lipsys, Virtua by Innovative Interface Incorporated. These are known as commercial software also. The company does not provide access to the source code of the software. In open source software, the source code is available freely for use and distribution. Anyone may download and install. Examples are Koha e Granthale, which is being provided by National Informatics Center. This screenshot, you can see it on this picture on the screen. It's an example of an integrated library system. You can see different sections like reference, cataloging, circulation, acquisition, serials management. All these different sections or modules, they are connected to a single file. That is why it is known as integrated. Now we will talk about the various sections or modules where automation is being applied. Acquisition, cataloging, circulation, serials control and reporting. Acquisition is one of the sections in the library. It acquires reading material, books etc. Books, electronic material, maps, charts, etc. Other reading material including journals, newspapers, databases, ebooks, etc. are acquired by serials or periodicals division of the library. 
In acquisition, selection of documents, ordering of documents, creating purchase orders, claiming and cancellation of documents, receiving and invoice processing. All these activities are done, are undertaken in acquisition section of the library. Extended procurements, gift tracking, maintaining information about all related funds, tracking fund allocation and adjustments, fund expenditure, cash balance, updating of physical information through recording of specific transactions, and tracking year-to-date expenditures. A catalog is a list or bibliography of books and records available in a library. Earlier in the manual system, libraries maintained book or card catalog. Book catalog lists bibliographic records in alphabetical order by different entries or by class number. There may be more than one record on each page. The pages are then bound, bound into a book. Cataloging. Under the same division, card catalog has cards of 7.5 cm into 12.5 cm. Each card has a full bibliographical record. These cards are filed alphabetically in the metal or wooden drawers in the cabinet. The picture on the screen shows the wooden card cabinets. Some of the libraries still use these cabinets for holding the card catalog. This picture on the screen, it shows open card cabinet. That means one of the drawers is open and this is how cards are held in the drawer. Online public access catalog. It is a computerized catalog of library resources available to public for searching online. In other words, OPAC is an interactive search module of an automated integrated library management system. It is very dynamic, highly flexible, easy and economical to maintain and capable of meeting almost every possible approach of the user. The searching capability is fast and accurate. Earlier, OPACs were developed as standalone online catalog, which users searched on the computer terminal available in the library. With the arrival of internet, most of the libraries have made their OPACs accessible via in internet. That means it is accessible to all the users all over the world on 24 into 7 basis. Users can search OPAC remotely and find information online. The search facility apprises the users about availability of each item for circulation, including current status of individual copies of a title and reserve status. Web OPAC is an OPAC which is provided on the web and with the help of internet, any user can access it from anywhere. Web OPAC is similar to OPAC in searching and browsing. The main difference between OPAC and Web OPAC is that OPAC can facilitate a user to access library materials from the library or campus of an institute through local area network, whereas Web OPAC can be searched from any corner of the globe through internet. In simple words, a user can search the library catalog through Web OPAC anywhere in the world. For example, you can search the catalog of NIOS library by clicking the web link at the link shown on the screen. So as you can see on the screen, this is web OPAC of NIOS library. You can search by using different keywords. You can place filters. Again, this shows the search interface of OPAC of NIOS library. As you can see on the screen, you can search. For example, you have keyed in the keyword classification and you have placed filters of the years that is between 1950 to 2018. The search has retrieved all the records which were held by the library beat and which were published between 1950 to, to, to 2018. You can see the screen shows 13 records were retrieved. This is public access catalog of Delhi University library system. This OPAC offers you to search through different approaches, through different parameters. For example, you can use, if you know the name of author, you can search. If you know the name of title, you can search. So these are different parameters which you, you can use to search OPAC. Here again, search was made for classification and all the books which had classification in their titles, they were show, retrieved and they are being shown on the screen. And if you click on any one of these titles, then the full record will open. This is full record of the book. 
on which one clicked. And then it also shows the status, whether it is available, it is issued, it has been sent for binding or it has been written off. And so it shows the different kinds of status of the books. We talked about cataloging, we talked about acquisition. Now we will see, uh, uh, focus on circulation system. Circulation is section involves direct interaction between users and staff and therefore requires efficient and speedy services. The main functions in the circulation section are issue of documents, return discharge of documents, renewal of documents, loan periods of documents, message notice to users, transaction recording devices for all offline processing and inventory control. The transactions at circulation desks such as charging, discharging, reissue, reservations, overdue reminders and statistics etc. are time consuming, highly labor intensive and error prone. Automation in circulation activities benefits the library, barcode facilities tremendously improve the speed, efficiency and accuracy of the circulation transactions. Circulation module works with the help of two master files, that is database of users and books. Integration of circulation module with library catalog allows the library staff to know about the status of a document and also helps the details of the users in case it is issued to her or him. Late fee calculation is another activity to be performed in circulation section for books return after due date. As you can see on the screen, this is the barcode card, library membership card, which is, which is issued to the students and all the details of the students are available in this barcoded library membership card. So students need not have any manual card, any reader tickets, they are issued and all their borrowing privileges are controlled through this barcoded library card and ILMS. Some of the libraries also use RFID technology. RFID stands for radio, radio frequency identification. RFID technology identifies unique items using radio waves. RFID tags are small integrated circuits which are scanned with the radio transmitter. No line of sight or direct contact with the tags is required to read them. This technology is, is being used by some of the libraries for issue and return of documents, preparing inventory of items. It also offers security against theft in libraries. The picture on the screen shows RFID system, which can be used for inventorying, for preparing the list of books, or for self-issue and return. In the serials control module or in the serials control section of the library, the following activities are done. Subscription of journals, subscription of e-journals and databases, subscription and renewal of journals, subscription and renewal of e-journals and databases. Claiming of missing issues, replacement of journals, monographic serials and invoice processing. Reporting. In libraries, we do need to prepare different kinds of reports, various reports and statistics related to library activities, tools for analysis of statistical information, maintenance of user, publishers and suppliers details. Libraries need to prepare stock to undertake the work of stock verification. Stock verification module develops stock verification report. It generates messages for library staff and users. It is also required to generate reports on lost books, missing books, books sent for binding, and so on for the purpose of library administration. Salient features of an automated library. It provides users with timely access to library material. It eliminates routine tasks. It reduces the amount of time spent on material acquisition, serials management. It supports new means of information retrieval by introducing users to global information. It allows users to search to use search strategies that exceed those that can be used with card catalog, allows users to search library collection from locations outside the four walls of library. Automated libraries motivate users and equip them with problem solving and information retrieval skills. Now from automated library, we'll go to digital library. A digital library is made of digital collections. 
Digital libraries store material in electronic format. These include document surrogates like bibliographic records and indexes in addition to full text documents, audio files, videos, and images, some of which cannot be represented or distributed in print format. Digital library also has CDs, DVDs, cassettes, and other electronic storage medium. Digital library collections are not limited to document surrogates. They extend to digital artifacts which do not exist in print format. Now the slide shows the home page of National Digital Library. As you can see on the screen, this is the home page of National Digital Library of India. National Digital Library has been started by MHRD under its national mission on education through information communication technologies. It is a collection of repository of learning resources with a single window search facility. Filtered and federated searching is employed to facilitate focused searching. It extends support for all academic levels across all disciplines. National Digital Library is designed to hold content in various languages and it provides interface and support for various Indian languages. It helps students to prepare for entrance and competitive exams. National Digital Library enables people to learn and prepare for, from best practices from all over the world and facilitates researchers to perform interlinked search from multiple sources. It is being developed at Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Now, virtual library. A virtual library is a collection of full text ebooks, journals, and databases from various publishers and sources which can be accessed by library members at any time from any internet connected computer, laptop, or other portable device. A virtual library is the library without walls. It is virtual, which means that it does not have any physical collection of resources. It aggregates distributed resources and provides links from its website. It is a collection of resources available on one or more computer systems, where a single interface or entry point to the collections is provided. It is the library which has no physical existence. The virtual libraries provide online access to special collections of information resources. Virtual libraries represent an organized set of links to items on the network. Normally, they include bibliographic citations with links to full text documents and other online resources such as videos or photos. Virtual libraries also serve as gateways to information resources on science management and policy for researchers, scientists, resource managers, policy makers, stakeholders, and pu general public. Virtual libraries do not have books, CDs, DVDs, or other physical media. Virtual libraries, some of the characteristics of virtual libraries are, there is no corresponding physical collection. Documents are not stored in any location of the library. Library only categorizes and provides links to these resources. Documents can be accessed from any workstation. Documents are retrieved and delivered as and when required. Effective search and browse facilities are available on the website of the virtual library. And some of the examples of virtual library, you can see on the screen, this is virtual library. Different links are provided under different subject categories. This is another example of virtual library, national mission on libraries. Now, differences between digital and virtual library. A digital library is a library consisting of digital material and services. Digital materials are items that are stored, processed, and transferred via digital devices and networks and are accessible using computers. A digital library has place-based collection of e-resources and may have even print resources. It provides access to e-resources held in-house as well as provide links to e-resources held somewhere else. On the other hand, a virtual library is the library which exists only virtually and that is library does not exist in real life. It consists of material that are organized in a virtual space using computers in computer networks. So, in a recap, we talked about library automation, 
which is application of computers to perform traditional library housekeeping activities such as acquisition, cataloging, circulation and serials control. We talked about digital libraries and uh, virtual libraries and difference between the two. For example, a digital library is a collection of documents in organized electronic form and virtual library is the library which exists only virtually, that is library does not exist in real life. It consists of materials that are organized in, a, in virtual spaces using computers in computer networks. The stress in virtual libraries is on organization and access, not on developing physical collections. It is the library without walls and without any physical collection. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.